Hello, everyone, and welcome to another episode of Jessiper's Weekly Ramble. I am Jessiper, and today we're going to talk about a lot of wonderful different things. We'll talk about a little bit of indie bandit stuff, and then we'll talk about what's going on with my channel and the homebrew that was slated for this month. And then we will talk about Shades of Scarlet. So, yeah, there we go. That's, that's, that's on the docket today. And so starting with Indie Bandits, we just wrapped up season one where we left off with the bandits in Meat Space about to take on a mission. And I'm very curious to see how it goes. They did not do a lot of planning. And they found out after I think after we ended stream that none of them has any points in driveland vehicle even though they were told ahead of time that they would need a vehicle I was nice I did tell them I don't let people increase skills because hey we need this skill and I want to have it if there's no RP or story reason for your character to have done that like you haven't put your character hasn't done anything to increase that skill or there's no reason in their past that they would have that skill because in real life sometimes like when you're starting out um putting points especially like backstory stuff can be kind of wonky you don't think of everything so silo whose tragic love affair um or one of them was a street racer race car driver whatever the other uh their player Min K said I feel like he would have taught how to drive and I was like yeah that's that's legit I'll allow you I'll allow you to put points in that for that so they up their drive land vehicle by two points and can now drive a car without it taking up their action so at least they do have someone who can drive that person also is pretty much their solo so we'll see how that goes if they get caught or not I did make this mission specifically a little easier than others but we'll see how it goes we will see how it goes I'm very excited for season two I do have so many things on my plate that I would like to do for it I want to get new uh, a new background just like a new kind of overlay for them I don't know if I'll have time to do it in like a week and a half we'll see but I would like to get like a new overlay. I would like to do a new intro video. And I don't think that's all gonna happen. But hey, we're gonna we're gonna get as far as we can get and we'll see where it goes. I also have to consolidate all my notes so they're not in various notebooks. And and in more in like one place online. So <laughs> that's also on on a project on my list, the ever-growing, unending list. As for, but I'm very excited, oh, season two. Season two should, I'm hoping, have a little more focus in Meat Space and their backstories and starting to see things come to light even though only one of them has given me their backstory. At least I've talked to them and bless, they're so lucky I take notes on things because my chat with them was to get them thinking about their character because character backstory is very important to me. Um, and knowing your character and making those decisions. So I spent a lot of time talking to them about it. And I took notes. So I know a little bit about their characters. But I've got a lot going on in my brain. And so I don't know their characters as well as they know their characters. But they haven't given me their backstory. Apart from one of them. So we'll see how it goes. But I'm very much looking forward to incorporating those and seeing a little more of, of meat space. Uh, in in season two, although of course there will still be some ELO, uh, they have to rank up to rank two next, and then I believe they'll be going to Heroes Point, uh, the dungeon in Heroes Point, which is the next big one. So that will be I have to I have to prep a dungeon, so that'll be exciting. It's good. I'm looking forward to it. Let's see how it goes. The dungeon is a city, so <laughs> I got this. I got this. Uh, as for just first tales, oh uh, man, guys, it's rough. I love doing the homebrew every month, so I'm gonna keep trying to do that. The one that I had planned is taking a lot longer than I had anticipated, mostly because it kept growing. 
So my original plan was to do a go-kart, like a nomad go-kart track. And I was like, yeah, because I was thinking of like what fun activities could be done. And uh, I thought that would be awesome. And then I was like, well, it would probably have like a bar associated with it. Or like just a, I don't want to say necessarily a bar. It's currently called a saloon because I'm like, that's got more of a feel than what I want. So now it's the, I think it's the Mayhem Saloon and Raceway, which is great. Except, because I have the mechanical bull in there. So, I think the mechanical bull rules are set. Those are done. I could have released those on their own, but I didn't want to. I do want to do kind of like a bar layout. I do want to have like a couple NPCs that you can interact with, like the owners of the bar or the people who work there. And then I want to have the go-kart portion of it, which is also a big part. So there's a lot of components to, to that. To, to, yeah, to that homebrew. I'm not even sure it's going to release for February. For February, I might do uh, my Bozo Valentine, uh, which will incorporate Dollmaker, who's my, my homebrew Bozo that was for One Night at Teddy's, which may or may not come out back in October. But there's certainly, because that one I feel could be like a one page. Here's a mission. Good luck. Have fun. And we'll see how it goes. Um, so we might not get to this, this go-kart saloon mayhem thing until March, which I'm okay with because I'd rather it be fully fleshed out and play tested and good than rushing it and being half-assed. So that's the status on the homebrew. I am trying to get together. I saw the art tell story and someone had done a list of like police scanner like if you you know tune into the police radio frequency things that you might pick up and I thought that was really cool and I know that blank sometimes because it says like your media is supposed to pick up on rumors twice a week and especially in downtime like those weeks can go by and trying to think of rumors and especially on the rumor table where it's like oh it's a vague rumor or it's like a very substantial and it could lead you to things I'm like but not everything should relate to like the missions because that would be a lot to try to process so I wanted to throw together like a simple hey you hear a rumor about this hey you hear a rumor about that uh, kind of table in various aspects of you know the news world so if you're like moxie's very into corporate takedown so she picks up a rumor about some celebrity uh going through an overdose i should add that to the table because i just thought of that and that's all on there um <laughs> she's probably not going to care to be perfectly honest like she'd ignore that entirely because that's not her focus so i'm trying to to put that together and hopefully maybe ha hey i might get it done We'll see. So that's that's the status, and I apologize, guys. I do want to try to do one a month, and I'm working really hard on that, and wish me luck. As for the channel itself, I know I was going to do some solo TTRPGs on it. I get very, very nervous about that. I get very anxious. I'm not sure if people would like to watch that or see it or see how it goes. Um, I've debated going back to streaming a game once a week, and because that's maybe a little more chill. A little more focused but I also want it to become work where I stop playing the game so I I don't know I don't know I'm at a loss what would you guys like to see on the channel what would what would be of interest to you for for content do I go because you've seen like, I've done game streams before those are still on my, my YouTube channel um, but I can switch it to more TTRPG content doing a lot of like the solo TTRPGs or talking about um, I don't know, world building and all that sort of jazz. So let me know what you would like to see. And maybe that'll help direct my brain to which way to go. And finally, I'm going to talk about Shade Scarlet. So this recent... Oh, actually, you know, I'm going to talk about my D&D game first. I had my D&D game on Monday, which was nice to get back into because we hadn't been playing for a while. And... Um, that was a lot of fun. It was it was really nice to kind of get back into the swing of things and get back into the character. And it's a very different game from the ones that I have been playing. Although we recently stumbled upon this giant plot of confusion. Um, 
usurpers and everything else. It's just, it's good. It's good, but it's, it's a lot. And I had to figure out why my, my character recently realized that she's not traveling with other human species, but not like of this plane species and probably, you know, I don't know if she's figured out that they're, they're demons. I think she has, but not, not great. And now she's on this quest to stop the Mad King from power because they're trying to kill this, the one dude who could claim the throne and be a good king. And we have to go find and protect him. And I'm like, why is my character going on this dangerous, deadly mission? Other than the fact that that's the story. And I realize that for her, because she's trying to figure out what connection her family has in Ashai, the kingdom of Ashai, with the kingdom of Justine, where they are, and um, what bonds are being built there, because she's got issues with the current like Mad Queen of Ashai, and what's the the current treatment of people over there. So I feel like so my decision was, hey, if I can help this person, he becomes king uh having uh, the king indebted to you is a good thing especially if you're trying to figure out weed out and change the entire viewpoint of a nation maybe hmm. we'll see so that's that's going on in that one i did feel like i wasn't completely in character as well as i should have been it's also very interesting to have other players who ask questions, I'm not used to that. Where they're engaged in the story as much as, you know, they want to pull threads as much as I do. Which is a refreshing but interesting change. Um, yeah. Yeah, so it was good. It was really, really good. And I'm very excited to see where the story leads. And um, yeah, let's see where it goes. Okay. As for Shades of Scarlet, Shades of Scarlet, which has been occupying my brain per usual for like the past five days, Moxie and Rex had their talk, and it was tense. It was super tense. It wasn't as bad as I thought it would be, as she thought it would be. We. He didn't do any... He didn't do the worst of what we had assumed he had done, which was good. But he didn't tell her, and, and there's things, and there was, you know, feelings of like, okay, but you, you still fucked up. And you still kind of betrayed my trust. Moxie has major trust issues. And so him betraying that, even though she can understand why he did it, and why he didn't tell her, it's still this, she's very confused and she's very lost. And, and I remember thinking, you know, all she wanted to do was just lean against him, have him wrap his arms around her and just take comfort in, in his presence like she's she's recently been doing. Because normally they're, as, as different as they are, they're very similar in a lot of ways. And, you know, he's become this source of strength for her where in in ways that cammy can't be because cammy cares so much about everyone and wanting a family that even when moxie's pissed off cammy's like well you need to try and be nice <laughs> he's like no i don't i can be fucking pissed off right now because this is bullshit and going to rex will be like yeah that's bullshit she's like right and it doesn't mean that they're not going to care uh it doesn't mean that she won't change it. she just kind of needs that that support and so even as they're going through this tough time i was like you know that's all she really wants to do she just wants to lean in and be like you know help me through this except he was the one that was causing that so <laughs> very she was very confused and frustrated and she doesn't know what to do with this whole i'm i'm hurt but i still want you hurt me, but I still want your comfort. And so she was very hesitant when he pulled her in. Um, 
she won't say out loud. And that's the other thing I think that they're both in that same spot is that they don't really, they haven't really admitted their feelings until the other one makes the first move. And I think there was a lot of great subtext there where when she did finally break down because he wasn't, he kept saying he understood and she's like, I don't think you do because she does love him and she hasn't said that to anyone. And so when she told him that he broke her heart and he said mine too, I think that was their their very subtle way of telling each other how deeply they feel. Could be wrong. I could be very wrong. Blank, you let me know. I know you listen to this. Comment below. Am I wrong? You probably won't, but that's okay. <laughs> GM secrets. <laughs> GM secrets. You'll have to find out in character. Um, but yeah, I think... I think that was their their subtle way of, hey, love you. It's like, yeah. And we're both hurting and they both need to get to this place of, of back to where they were and it'll it'll be rough. And they, they both want that, which is nice. I think they're both very lost on how to get back to that. And what she's asking him for, I don't think he understands, which is, as a player, adorably wonderful. Um, unless he goes and gets himself killed, in which case it's to be real bad, because I don't know if she can... She will. She'll move on. She's not going to be great, though. It's it's going to be real bad. It's going to be real bad. He uh, made her realize a lot of things about her past, her past love. And um, he's offered her a future that she didn't think she had. But yeah, he's um, he's offered her a future and a reason to fight beyond just revenge. And she doesn't want to lose that. She doesn't want to lose him. And in that way of like, they're so similar but so different where he took out his, his frustration and, you know, this outward explosion of anger. She's kind of imploding inwards and... Uh, doesn't know what to do and is very unmoored and very lost and is looking for him to kind of guide her back I don't know that he's he's figured that out so we'll see and of course because I have time to, to figure this out um, I have hope for them I have hope that they'll be able to get back but um, because I've had time it's like Okay, but I can see where he is, and I forgive him, and I have to remember that for Moxie, this has only been, like, a few hours, and she's probably slightly drunk at this point. Um, so, going back to that, that mindset on Saturday will be, will be interesting, but she understands that he, you know, he didn't feel he had a choice that people in the nook would have gotten harmed if he didn't bug this stranger's apartment, so of course he bugged it, right? makes total sense makes total sense to her and even now if he had been given the choice hey bug her apartment or i'm gonna hurt people in the nook moxie i mean moxie would have told him well then bug my apartment it's fine don't let the people in the nook get hurt because she cares about them maybe not as much as he does but she certainly does care about them so she would have told him to do it anyway and so that's not what really bothers her um about the stories that he didn't tell her, especially when she opened up to him. But she can understand that too. Because I think in Moxie's mind, he hasn't experienced someone accepting him for who he is. He's had a lot of lovers. She's been told this. Uh, he's a player. He's had a lot of lovers. Da, 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 da. But I don't think, or she doesn't, well, we, I guess at this point, don't think he's ever been in a relationship where someone's seen him for who he is and still cared like either things got too serious and the other person bolted or they're like no nah, you're not what i'm looking for and he's always kind of you know prepared for that and not invested himself and so it makes sense that he he's like well let me tell you about these lighter betrayals because you'll probably tell me to fuck off and then i don't have to you know drop this big bomb and it'll be fine and she was like nope that makes sense and he's like well fuck um, 
because he he didn't want to risk it. He didn't want to risk losing her, and I think that's very sweet. It came from a place of fear and a place of love, and when she can realize that, because I don't think she's in that mindset yet, um, it is very endearing. And I think it will help speed the recovery process, though he'll still be in the doghouse uh, <laughs> until, I don't know, until she can get over it. Because the big thing, she doesn't want to rush forgiving him because she doesn't want to end up resenting him. And so when she forgives him, she wants it to come from a place where she's confident that that's where she is and she's not there yet. So we'll see. We'll see how long it takes them to get there. But, um... I love it. I love their story. I've rambled on this for way too long. But I do. I love their story. It wasn't anything that I was expecting. I, When I built Moxie, she was a woman who enjoyed sex, um, enjoyed physical intimacy, but didn't had no intention of ever getting into a relationship. That was not even on her radar as a thing. Not that she dislikes it. Um... She was still really broken up about her her tragic love affair. Um, and was on this path of revenge and didn't, didn't see an out for herself. So she didn't want to get into a relationship. And then Rex happened. So it's, it's definitely an arc that I was not expecting. Did not, we did not talk about ahead of time. Uh, the most I think it was with Blake was I was like, hey, by the way, during this time when Moxie was cyber psycho and or in that cyber psychosis, that first stage uh, where she was being very impulsive. Um, I was like, hey, he would notice that she's checking him out like during the move a lot, a lot because she would have she wouldn't have had that that masked wall up as as much as she normally does and he's and he said like are you interested in pursuing a relationship said, if it happens it happens i'm not opposed to something happening but that'll depend on the characters and i yeah i don't think i don't know what he expected i did not expect it to get like for them to be this intense this quickly i adore it i think it's it's very it's kind of very them, um, and it amuses the hell out of me that they went into it hard, fast, and now are like, wait, 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 maybe we should slow down a bit and figure this shit out. Um, but I love where it's going. It's just, like I said, it's not an arc we had planned. It's not an arc um, I thought about, but like her finding a family, maybe her opening her, her heart back up has been um, a wonderful surprise, and I'm very... Very excited to see where it goes. Uh, as for this upcoming mission, whoo, it'll be interesting. It will be interesting. We'll have to see how a Saturday plays out. And I hope you guys can join us. Be sure to follow Saves Averse Death and join us over on Twitch or listen on podcasts the next week and let me know your thoughts, where you think this is going. I'm curious. And I think, I think at this point I have rambled for way too long. So have yourselves a wonderful week and I will see you next time. Meow for now.